previous lessons on algebra, we learned how to solve what we call one-step equations. They're called one-step because it only took us one step to solve them. It only took one step to isolate x by itself and see what it is. In this lesson, we'll have some more practice with those, um, with those type of exercises, but we'll begin to work with signed numbers. So some of the problems that we'll do will involve negative numbers, and some of your answers may be negative. Let's take a look at a few examples. For this first example, I'd like to do x plus 5 equals 3. Okay, now recall how we do this. We want to try to get x by itself, but we see that 5 is being added to it. We'll do the inverse operation, which is to subtract 5. And we'll do that on both sides of the equation. So, minus 5 here, minus 5 here. Now, I'll bring down the equal sign. Recall that on the left, the plus 5 and the minus 5 cancel out. What that really means is that they equal 0. So we have x by itself on the left. Now, don't get confused on the right. This looks a little different than what we've seen. A lot of students, when they see this, they'll just say 3 and then negative 5. And they're not really sure of what to do with those two numbers. You just have to keep in mind what it is that we're really doing. The whole point of what we did was we subtracted 5 on each side of the equation. So what we really have is 3 minus 5. 3 take away 5. Now, you do have to feel comfortable with basic signed number arithmetic. If you're not comfortable with how to do problems like 3 minus 5, you're really going to be in trouble when you get to this stage in algebra. So what you really have to do is go back and review all of those lessons and make sure you know them inside and out. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. And for this problem, it just so happens that x has a negative value. x is negative 2. Let's go ahead and check. So recall how to check. I'll rewrite the original equation. And then I'll substitute the value of x that I think is right into the original equation. Negative 2 plus 5, does that equal 3? Now again, you have to feel comfortable with your signed number arithmetic. We can think of this as I owe $2, but I have 5, so that leaves me with $3. 3 does equal 3, so that shows that we have the correct value of x, the correct value that works in the original equation. Okay, let's take a look at another example. For this example, I'd like to do 4 plus x equals negative 6. Okay, again, don't get nervous. There's a minus sign there. We'll just work with it. Now, we look to see what's being done to the x. In this case, we're adding 4 to it. Don't get confused with the fact that the 4 is over here and that it's not x plus 4. We know that that doesn't matter. So we'll do the opposite of a positive 4, which is negative 4. I'll subtract 4 on both sides. We've seen what happens with the 4 and the minus 4. That's really 0, so we won't write it. We just have x by itself. Now, on the right, again, don't just say negative 6, negative 4 because then you're not going to know what to do with those two numbers. You just have to think about what's really going on. We started with negative 6, but then we're taking away 4. We're subtracting 4 on each side. So the problem is negative 6 minus 4. Again, by the time you get to this stage in algebra, you really have to be able to do things like that very quickly and easily, and most importantly, accurately. So make sure that you, if you can't do that, you're just going to be in trouble. And it's really not the algebra that's at fault. It's the signed number arithmetic. So, make sure you can do negative 6 minus 4, which is negative 10. Let's just check really quick over here. We'll do our check over here. 4 plus x equals negative 6. I'll substitute what I think is the correct value of x. 4 plus negative 10. Does that equal negative 6? I have $4, but I owe $10. So, I still owe 6. So that shows that the answer of x that we got is correct. It works in the original equation. Okay, let's do another subtraction problem. We'll do x minus 7 equals negative 2. Okay, so we have x minus 7 equals negative 2. Again, we want to get x by itself, so we'll do the opposite of what we see. 
Instead of minus 7, we'll do plus 7. Do that on both sides. The 7s cancel out because they equal 0. Now, we have negative 2 plus 7. Again, you really have to feel comfortable with how to do that. I just can't stress that enough. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5, positive 5. We'll do a fast check. So, I'll substitute what I think is the correct answer. 5 minus 7, does that equal negative 2? Yes, it does. Negative 2 equals negative 2. So that shows that 5 is the correct answer. Okay, for this next exercise, I'd like to do a multiplication problem. Negative 4x equals negative 20. Okay, now don't get nervous by the negative signs. This means x, some number, some unknown number, times negative 4 equals negative 20. What's the opposite of multiplying by negative 4? Dividing by negative 4. Now sometimes students aren't sure if they should divide by 4 or negative 4. Just keep in mind that what we really want to be left with is 1x. Because when we're left with 1x, we can just omit the 1. We know that we don't have to bother to write the 1. The only way to get 1, uh, the, the only way to get 1x is to have a negative 4 here. Because negative 4 divided by negative 4 is 1, positive 1. You have to remember the rules for signed number division. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So these cancel. We are left with 1x, which I can just write as x. Now again, signed number division. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we have negative 20 divided by negative 4, which is positive 5. Okay? Um, let's go ahead and do a check really fast. Okay, so we think the answer is positive 5. Negative 4. Now, the 5, I definitely have to put in parentheses, otherwise it will, it will look like negative 45. Negative 4 times 5, does that equal negative 20? A negative times a positive, you have to remember, is a negative. Negative 20 does equal negative 20. That shows that this answer of positive 5 is correct. Let's take a look at another example, a division problem x divided by negative 3 equals negative 7. Okay, x divided by negative 3 equals negative 7. Now recall how we did this. Since we're dividing by negative 3, what's the opposite of dividing by negative 3? Multiplying by negative 3. Now I'm going to skip some steps just to save some time. Typically, when we do this, first of all, I'm going to multiply by negative 3 on both sides. Recall that this negative 3, even if it's written really big next to the fraction, we know that it's really in the numerator. Remember that. It's really negative 3 over 1. That gives us the right to cancel it out with this. And remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So on the left, we're really just left with positive 1x, which is just x. Negative 7 times negative 3. A negative times a negative is a positive. You have to remember that. X equals 21. Let's just check really fast. I'll skip rewriting the original problem. I just want to check. Does 21 divided by negative 3, does that equal negative 7? And it does. A positive divided by a negative is negative. That does equal negative 7. So our answer of 21 does work.